Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's been five months since I've actually uploaded a video. Um, I just needed to get back into things really. I needed some inspiration, so I've been taking some time out and spending time with my son. You can probably hear in the background is playing. And I've got some good ideas of things that I'm going to be doing again. Um, I've also been tagged in the Mum Life raw tag video so I'm going to be answering some questions honestly and I was tagged by um, my friend Catherine who is Dubai expat mummy on the YouTube channel she's very honest very lovely very kind a great mum and I thought if she can be as open and honest with her viewers then maybe I should be brave and take that risk too and right on cue this is my little gorgeous bundle of joy. <laughs> this is Jefferson. Oh, you're so heavy. Mama. Mm. Do you want a snack? Are oh, you alright? Have you had a drink, Bubba? You gonna go and get a drink? Yeah. Snack. Yeah. <laughs> Just giving him the world's most largest conference player ever. Good boy! Nom nom nom. So, on we go proceedings. Right, so the wow. questions. Is that a yummy pear? Mmm. Mummy loves pears as well. Good boy. So describe your day as a mum today in one word. Fun. <laughs> We've been playing with the water beads today. Um, it's a really nice sensory play activity. They start off tiny, like about that size, and then grow to about that size. So, um, we were playing with them this morning, and I was just getting him to sort of feel them and put objects in the tray. Um, he enjoyed shaking the tray sideways so that all the beads were bouncing around everywhere. And of course, he did tip the whole tray up on the floor. So that was fun. Fun. There you go. The word of the day. Um, but I will never stop him making a mess. I get annoyed sometimes that I'm the one that has to clear it up, obviously. But I'm not going to stop him making a mess because that's how he's discovering things in life. Sorry that I'm really bummed up, by the way. I've got hay fever at the moment. Um, but yeah, just, you know, I want him to have fun. I want him to explore. And I'm always making stuff that we can play with together. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, what's the next question? What's the most challenging part about connecting with other mums? Um, I think just sometimes it's just time constraints. People work different days to the days that I work, um, but there are other people that don't work, so I can see them. Um, but I think it's just making time for each other. It's so hard when um, you're a working mum, you want to spend time with your family, spend time with your partner as well. So making time for other mums can be difficult, but as long as you really do make an effort, there's no reason why you can't regularly see other mums. Um, sometimes I think at the, I do like a messy play on Friday with my son, and I do make an effort to chat to the other mums and ask some questions and chat about their children. But I don't know if I'm sort of forming any lasting friendships though. I'd like to. It'd be really, really nice. And I think sometimes with something like that where you only see them once a week and people come and go as well, there's not always the same people there every week, that I think it's just going to take time. And I think if you put in the effort, you invest, then, you know, might get some long-lasting friendships out of it. <laughs> Share one horrible poo moment. We've all been there. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's been a lot of bad poo moments, but I think the worst one was when Jefferson was only a tiny baby, and I can only describe it as like a poo cannon. My husband and I ran to the changing table, took off the nappy, saw that he'd done like a poorly poo, so got him all cleaned up, and then more was coming out. But not just... Coming out gently, it shot like a cannon, 
straight onto the wall, it hit the curtain, it hit everything, it was just like sliding down. It was like something out of a horror movie. And my husband, who's not particularly good around gross things, <laughs> was really freaking out. I just thought it was funny, but obviously, yeah. Not so funny when we had to clear it all up, but, you know, yeah, a poo cannon. I've never seen anything like it. Horror movie. Absolute horror movie. <laughs> and I still remember that. Um, how do you cope with public child meltdowns and tantrums? Uh, Jefferson will literally be two on Monday, but he's been experiencing the terrible twos since he was about, goodness me, 17, 18 months old. Um, what he likes to do is to lie down on the floor, whether that be a pavement, like hard concrete. If he's having a bit of a meltdown or a tantrum, he will literally lie on the floor. So I have to take the stance of being unemotional, quite blank. I'm basically just giving him a moment. If he wants to lie on the floor, I will let him lie on the floor because that is his way of telling me that he's not happy. But equally, I can't condone that kind of behaviour, so I have to be quite neutral about it. I wouldn't raise my voice. Um, and I just, I really cringe when I'm out in public and I see mums calling their children idiots or saying shut up to them. I feel that's so harsh. And believe me, Jefferson does push my buttons. And the worst is when you're trying to get them into a pram or get them into a car seat and they're arching their back and doing everything they possibly can not to do it. But I would never call him a name or tell him to shut up. Um, I just basically have to ride it out. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's not fun. And I do always worry that people are judging me. <laughs> uh oh, have you done something? What have you done? You're so gorgeous. I've got to do the next question. Ready? Do you want to help me with the next question? It says... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Honestly, how much screen time does your child have? <laughs> Bear with. He doesn't really have a tablet or a phone to play with. Um, unless we're travelling. But I would say... The TV tends to be on in the background, but he pays attention to it. Probably when he first gets up in the morning, he comes into our bedroom, we put the TV on so that I can get ready and then I can get him ready. Um, Scrambleberg. And he tends to enjoy TV during meal times, but it's not in the background really. He doesn't, he doesn't sit there glued to it. And he plays with loads of stuff, like, <laughs> right here. <laughs> He's got a scramble book. <laughs> He's got loads of stuff um, that he plays with all the time. He's got play food. Wow. Baby. And paint, blue paint. Thank you. Black paint, good boy. Yeah. So yeah, he doesn't have that much screen time. <gasps> Gold paint. So, what's the next question? What colour is that? It's silver. What's your easy dinner that you give at least once a week? Um, red paint. Good boy. Let's get all the paint now. Um, I tend to make big batch, thank you, big batch cooked meals that I freeze in little pods and then I can just pop them out and defrost them and he has like a really good nice made meal that's been like pre-made and I don't, <laughs> pens everywhere, I don't have to worry about um, having enough time to make him something decent. So his favourites tend to be chilli con carne and I put lacto cheese on top for him. Um, he loves lamb tagine and he started really liking couscous with that. Sounds so like modern middle class baby, love it. Um, and 
he likes like a mild curry. But I would say, because I seem to have loads of the pods that I've frozen, he tends to have either chilli or lamb tagine. So, yeah. <laughs> he definitely loves cheese. So I give him the lacto cheese. I haven't necessarily had him um, checked that he's lactose intolerant or anything, but I know that I've got a casein intolerance, which is very similar to lactose intolerance. Um, and he's been... TMI here. He's been farting a lot less having the lacto products, so I've been having them as well. <laughs> he loves yogurt as well. You got your pair? No. Did you yell, cry, or struggle today? No. Most days I say no. <laughs> That happens a lot. There's a lot of no's and me looking and shaking my head. Uh, I wouldn't say I yell. If it's that time of the month that I will cry and I will literally say to my husband, can you please take him? Please. <laughs> um, just because I emotionally cannot cope as well. <laughs> and I'm more highly strong. But I'm fairly calm. And I want to remain calm, because being calm means you can deal with situations a lot better. Uh, I got a bit annoyed yesterday when he was bringing his play sand, which is wet from all the rain that we've had, and bringing it indoors and just dropping it on the floor, because he knows that mummy will then have to vacuum it up. That he does repeatedly. I tell him off, I tell him not to do it, I've made my husband tell him off. We literally try and sort of bash his hands outside so he drops the sand. I say bash, I mean like tap the sand out of his hands, I don't beat him up. Um, but he still brings it in and he thinks it's so funny that I have to sweep stuff up or vacuum stuff up. So he makes mess for me. Right, the next question. What was the best moment of your day so far as a mum? I think this morning, when for the first time ever, he said, there you go, and handed me one of my makeup brushes. I thought that was very sweet. I've not heard him say that before. And he said it quite confidently to mean that he was passing me something. Um, he's also saying thank you, but he says ta. But he's saying thank you a lot. So every time he says that to me at the moment, I'm like, oh, wow. Um, yeah, I think it was when he said, there you go. It's a funny thing to be proud of. Um, but also when he was doing the sensory play as well with the water beads, and I was just watching him explore, and each time he'd sort of look at me as if to say, you know, am I doing the right thing here? Is this okay? He even picked up a water bead and went, um, num, num. I looked at me and I was like, no, we don't eat those. And he just smiled and then put it back down. I was like... <laughs> Where did this sort of common sense and questioning things come from? Absolutely lovely. <laughs> About the deeds. I'm cooking your lunch, sweetheart. Drop your pear. Oh, did you find a water bead? Good boy. Don't pick up the tray. Don't pick up. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're tidying up. You can have a pear. Right. What is your secret guilty pleasure to reward your mum life? I recently bought um, a UV LED gel nail light thing. Light, nail lamp. <laughs> a nail lamp. Yeah. I completely messed it up on this side. Yeah. But I just love having my nails done. So yes, I do that myself yeah. now. Yeah. I also watch yeah. YouTube. Just watch a lot of YouTube. That's my guilty pleasure. I wouldn't even say it's guilty. I love it. No, I'm not ashamed. Um, how often do you experience mum guilt? I don't know. It's on and off, really. Probably every day. But it has to be every day, doesn't it? Mums feel guilty about everything. I felt it a lot more when he was a baby, just because I felt like I just didn't have a clue what I was doing. 
because obviously I've not done it before, so I was learning as I was rearing him. I just felt guilty about everything. I felt guilty that I hadn't got him into some kind of messy play group for ages. But looking back now, it was just what was right for all of us. And he was ready for it then. But I feel guilty about that. I feel guilty that I couldn't breastfeed him for as long as I wanted to, but um, my supply wasn't there and I didn't give it a chance to build up. I know that. But it was a bit of a struggle. But I still managed to go on and off for about five, six months. So I'm pleased with it in that respect. But there's, there's always stuff you feel guilty about every day. I worry about the food I give him sometimes. I really do. Even though I try and cook nice things. Share one taboo thing about motherhood you think should be talked about more. sure if it is a taboo well, I definitely think breastfeeding they just and don't get me wrong a lot of people oh Bubba what's up sweetheart I think he's trapped under a chair he's just stuck under the table but he's fine I better make this quick because we'll see the battery's about to die um, breastfeeding, definitely. Even though I went to like an NCT group and I learned about it and I heard the facts that less than 3% of women continue with breastfeeding after the first week or something ridiculous in the UK. There I was sitting there thinking, well, I'm going to carry on with it. It's ridiculous that people don't breastfeed. Absolutely ridiculous. There's no reason for it. It's there. It's really easy. You know, why would you fuss around with bottles and formula and all that business? And believe me, some people find it easy, and I think it's brilliant. But some people find it hard. I found it hard. But I carried on with it. But it took all the strength in the world to carry on with it. A lot of crying on my part. My husband saying, for goodness sake, you know, you, you're doing the best you can. Do not worry, go over to formula if you want. But I just didn't want to give in. I didn't want to let go. But I needed so much support and help and I just, it's not something that is really talked about enough before people start. I don't think they re sort of, I don't think there's any way you can help people understand if you find it difficult, how difficult it can be and how horrendous and guilty and awful you feel if you really want to do it and you can't or you struggle. And I felt so bad. I felt like I was a failure. I don't ever want anyone to experience that. And so many people that have gone on to be mums that I know, and I've given the advice and said, you know, if you find it hard, don't worry, it's okay, it's okay. They've all found it really easy. <laughs> Which makes me think, oh, it's just me. No. I know there are a lot of people that struggle, a lot of people that find it difficult. And there are a lot of support groups out there. It's just a case of people having to be brave enough to reach out. I was in such an emotional state in those first couple of days that I was too scared to make a phone call because I thought, I'm just going to cry down the phone line. I'm going to be nonsensical, a blubbering wreck, and yeah. But it's got to be done, hasn't it? <laughs> I think more needs to be said about that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching my video today. Please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and a massive hello to Catherine. Thank you very much for the tag. And I look forward to some future collaborations. Um, and yes, if you haven't already looked at Catherine's channel, please go over and look at it now. I'll put a link in the description box below. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye.